if you won't go, <clears throat> you'll find there's some obstructions in getting to it. And if you want diamonds, you'll find there's some obstructions in getting to it. If you want uh, clay, we got a lot of it back here, it's free of charge. Be glad if you take <laughs> off a few tons, it'd be a great blessing to us. But if you're wanting something precious, there are obstructions to it. And if one thinks that they can find the most high without obstructions, he's wrong. Every devil in hell wants you to miss God. Every demon that ever possessed a human wants you to miss God. And the devil himself wants you to miss God. And so in order to reach the most high, you have to shatter obstructions. Even, even that, that lackadaisical situation to where you just do nothing. You know, you just, just relax into nothing. You have to fight that thing too. To reach God takes energy and searching out. When you read in the Bible of men like Moses who fasted and prayed for 40 days and nights, that's reaching out. When you find a man like Elijah who fasted for 40 days and nights, that's reaching out. Those are the men that knew more about the Most High than others knew. And so there are obstructions into knowing, understanding, worshiping, following the Most High God. Now these lessons will not be complete in my mind. I may be wrong. If we do not warn any of our friends that there will be obstructions of certain kinds that will seek to hinder you in your quest for searching out the Most High God. In Zechariah chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, it says, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest. That's not the Joshua that went into Canaan because this man was a high priest. And he was standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. You know, until we get to heaven, we may never know the cosmic battles that are fought all around us. The cosmic battles that are fought around us. Verse 2, And Jehovah said to Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused that iniquity to pass from thee, and I will close thee with a change of raiment. Here's an insight into a conflict, into a battle, to where a person was reaching out for God, and he was a high priest. And he was withstood there by the devil himself. Withstood there. So don't think it's strange if you come to church and can't get your mind on the sermon. The devil don't want you to. And don't, don't feel strange if you start to read the Bible and you go to sleep. You need to stand up and jump up and down and read it. You won't go to sleep jumping up and down. What are some of the obstructions that we could expect? Not saying that we're going to, you know, offer all of them, but some that we could expect. Number one is the devil, of course. Satan. In Genesis 3 and 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye should not eat of every tree of this garden. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree, of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now she knew the whole story. She knew the whole story. So she wasn't operating and functioning in ignorance. She knew that she wasn't to touch it. She also knew that it was in the midst of the garden. It wasn't even close by. You couldn't get there by accident. You had to find your way into the midst of the garden. Seek your way to get into where it was. And then God has said, you mustn't eat it. And then just like most of us, she added to the Bible. God did not say you couldn't touch it. But she added that. That's just the way, you know, with people always adding something to the Bible that God don't need, you know, and that you shall not touch it, lest ye die. But then the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. You know, that's just what the devil says today. You can get by with sin. You can commit adultery and get by with it. You know, you can steal a little bit and get by with it. You can lie a little and get by with it. Verse 5, then not only did he lie to her, now he lied about God. He said, 
Elohim doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes will be open, and you shall be as gods. Can you imagine in the Garden of Eden, he's trying to make more than one god? Then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. There was no conscience in operation before that time. They knew neither good nor evil. They only knew God. They didn't know right or wrong. They knew God. That's all they knew was God. When the woman saw or understood from the serpent that the tree was good for food, now that's really a lie again. You can't look and see that it's good for food because you pass by a lot of restaurants, especially in the big cities, and look in the window, and you see that big juicy steak there and all of that, you just have a bite of it. And you suddenly discover that it's, it's made out of chalk or it's made out of wood and it's painted pretty and it is not meat at all. It may be plaster of Paris. It's not good for your teeth, you see. It just looks good. And so for her to see, say, I saw that it was good for food, that's a hallucination. And that's where the devil's still fooling people. They're looking on sin and saying, that's good for you. You see, it's not good for you. Every transgression in the world is bad for you. And if you don't believe it, just keep trying it. It'll finally take you to hell. She said, it's good to eat. It's also pleasant to the eyes. Well, she could see that. It was pretty. Everything God made was pretty. It was a tree to be desired to make one wise. That was another lie. When I was a boy, they used to say, if you ate fish, you'd get smart. And though I was just a boy, I only said one thing. How many fishermen been president? None, you see. I said, well, must not be working. You don't make anybody president. A tree to make you wise. Trees don't make you wise. So she took of the fruit, she ate it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat it. And so you have an obstruction to knowing the Most High, and that's the devil, lying to you, cheating you, deceiving you. You have to get past him to get to the Most High. So there are fences to climb. And there's no need of my telling you, oh, just come to my class. You're going to know the Most High. I wouldn't be honest in that. If you're going to get to the Most High to know the Most High, you've got to climb some fences. And the first one you've got to get closed with, you've got to get past the devil. Here are some things he did in, in B. In Genesis 18, now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And Jehovah said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child when I'm old? Satan closed the womb of a woman. Satan closed the womb of a woman for the simple reason that God said, that out of this woman will come one that will produce nations, that all the nations of the world will be blessed through your seed. And the devil said, I'll take care of that. He closed the womb. And then God opened it. And God opened it when the devil didn't believe it would work anymore. And God opened it when all mankind was sure it wouldn't work anymore. So in dealing with the things of God, you deal beyond man and the devil. And if you're not willing to deal beyond man and the devil, you're never going to get to God. So this means in seeking the most high God, you've got to go beyond natural situations. You've got to go beyond natural knowledge. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not going to find the most high in the way that I want you to find him. You're not going to find him in his excellency. You're not going to find him in his majesty. And I want you to find him that way in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 6, a great deception of a priesthood. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Now the original in verse 2 says, And the sons of Elohim, that's exactly what it says, saw the daughters of red earth, or Adam, that they were beautiful. And they took them wives 
of all that they chose. Now, what do we have here? If you'll take a few scriptures, you'll find out. In Job chapters 1 and 2, the sons of God stood before God and represented Job. And Satan came also. And the sons of God said, Job is a just man, a good man, a beautiful man, a wonderful lover of God. And Satan says, but you built, you built, a, you built a fence around him. You got a hedge around him. I can't get to him. He said, if you move that hedge, he'd curse you to your face. And God said, no, that's not true. He, he, he loves me. And so Job lost everything he had because the devil wanted to break his relationship with the Most High. You go after God and the devil goes after you. The devil got no joy out of Job getting in a mess like that and losing his family and, and getting sick and all that business. But to obstruct Job getting through to God, but brother, I want you to know that in the, in the last parts of the Job, he says, once I had heard of God, now I've seen him face to face. Amen. You have some tribulations and you'll see God like you've never seen him before. And you have some problems and you come out of them and you'll see God in a better way than you've ever seen him before. He gets real clear when you come up out of those places. And so the devil, the devil is a loser, you see. He is a loser. And so we find here, you can read the rest of it. This is all, also the men that work with Melchizedek. They, they, were, they were the Melchizedek priesthood. You read all about that in Hebrews chapters 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. And they're the ones that Jesus preached to in prison. These messengers were the ones that Jesus preached to in prison. And it tells you there in the next verse that they were the ones that sinned in the times of Noah. So, you, you know, there's a, clear, there's a clear passage to it. They were the priesthood that fell. In all the history of the world, the priesthood falls first. Every time, even today, you got more wretched preachers in this country than got any other wretches. You say, why? The devil hates them more. And the devil goes after them. The devil seeks to hurt them, you see. Rather than criticizing preachers, you should pray for them. They are under an attack that maybe you'll never know anything about yourself, you see. Your D here, the devil calls King Saul to turn to witchcraft rather than to the Most High God. In 1 Samuel 28 and 6, when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dream, nor by Urim, nor by, by the prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I might go to her, inquire of her. And his servant says, Behold, there is a woman which hath a familiar spirit in Endor. And here is a man that damned his own soul. You see, the devil led him to a witch to find out about his own future because God wasn't talking to him. And that man lost his own soul. You, you, you. You, you read the whole story there. That was the end of him at that time. And so there are obstructions to knowing the Most High. And the number one of those obstructions is the devil. If Saul had sought after the Lord, he could have learned something, but he didn't. He sought after witchcraft, and he damned his own soul. You can read that in your, in your leisure time. There are other obstructions besides the devil. Your own mind is an obstruction so you're reaching out to find God. Without man, by human wisdom, has never known God. You cannot think your way through to God. To receive God is a revelation. The Lord Jesus said to Peter, when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, he said, Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. You see? And so a knowledge of God is by revelation. You don't think out the greatness of God. The reason David had this amazing revelation that we were talking about was his praises. He just kept praising God, and these words began to flow out of him, you see. They didn't flow out of his head. They flew, they, they flew up out of his spirit. And Isaiah was the same. He was the most praising prophet in the Old Testament, you see. He magnified God stronger and higher than anyone else. And these things poured forth out of him, not because he was more intellectual than somebody else, but because his attitude of spirit was that of praise and adoration. And that's where it came from. The human mind, if you think without divine guidance, you will not discover the Most High. If you use your mind without divine guidance, you will not have tremendous revelations of the Most High. In Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. And it's of your thinking kind of heart that he's talking about there. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, 
He says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, the, the way to knowing the Most High is that way, casting down <coughs> thoughts, imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High. Bring into the captivity every thought into the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so your mind can be an obstruction until you're getting to know the Most High God. In Romans 8 and 6, it says, to be carnally minded, that is to be natural minded, to be earth minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the natural mind, it's fighting against God. It's an enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Whew, that's strong language. That men that have a true knowledge of the Most High God receive it through spiritual means. And, and uh, that's the reason I have chosen to put this as your finale, in order that you won't through your brain think you're going to know God. It's through your worship that you're not going to know God. And if you don't like to worship, you never will know much about the Most High God. The men that I have met in my whole lifetime that seemed to know more about God than anybody else were high worshipers, high worshipers. They were not cold-blooded theologians. They were not. They were worshipers of the Most High. And there is a path into the bosom of the Most High. It's worship and praise and adoration into the heart of God. In Romans 8 and 6 and 7, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it is not subject even to the laws of God. The laws of God are different from that. In Ephesians 2 and 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And so Paul tells us here that our conversation related to natural things, even lustful things, and the desires of the natural man, and the desires of the mind, we will not be able to use our natural mind to break down the barriers that hold us back from a great knowledge and a true knowledge of the Most High God. Come into the New Testament in Mark chapter 7, verse 20. It says, and he said, that which cometh out of the man that, that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts and adulterers and fornications and murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile the man. So if you're going to reach through into a knowledge of the Most High and tremendous revelations and tremendous experience of the Most High, you have to get past that thing. You have to get past your, your human being part of you and get into the spiritual part, which it comes to you through your born again experience. When you're born again, a new man moves inside. You are born anew and afresh. All right? And then it says, and the, and, and the flesh. Satan is an obstruction. Your own mind is an obstruction. And the flesh. Abandonment to carnal desires will keep one from knowing the Most High. When you gratify every sensual feeling of your flesh, that becomes an obstruction to your knowledge of the Most High. And that's hard for us today because we have been taught that if not personally us, our parents were deprived of having chocolate candy every day and because they didn't, then we should have it twice a day. My father could not have a bicycle when he was young, so I'll have a motorcycle. You see, if we abandon ourselves to the carnal desires within us, we'll never know much about the Most High God. Most religious people do not know the Most High God today because they have abandoned themselves into the luxuries of having everything natural and carnal that's affordable to them. And that becomes an obstruction to knowing the Most High God. Romans 7 and 5, 
For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death, he says, when we're living in the flesh. Romans 8 and 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. If you're functioning in the spirit, you don't function after things of the flesh. It don't matter much about your suit and about your dress and about your shoes. You see, you're living another life. You're reaching for other, other goals. And if you don't reach for those, you miss this what we're talking about. For me just to stand up and say, now listen, everybody read this syllabus and you're going to know the most high. I don't, I got condemned about it. That's the reason you put that lesson in there. I said, I, I, I had not really gotten the whole truth in here yet. Yes, God is there. He's glorious. He's wonderful. What's going to keep us from getting to him? You got to knock the devil out of the way. You got to knock your mind out of the way. And now you got to knock the flesh out of the way. Galatians 5, 16, this I say, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how simple it is. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. It fights back. Oh, you're a fanatic. Don't do that. The spirit fights back against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. They belong in two different worlds. So that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. You're not under obedience. You're under love, and you do things because you love God. It's not hard to do. If coming to this class was hard, you came with the wrong motive. If you had the struggle to get here, you need a little prayer before you come. Are you here? Amen. Amen. Now, the works of the flesh are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to get to know the eternal one if that's the kind of stuff. Look at envying. Look at idolatry. Look at it. Hatred. Right next door to witchcraft. I hate so-and-so. Well, might as well be a witch. You're not going anywhere. they all right there. Look at drunkenness. Look what's next to drunkenness. Murder. Oh, I didn't know that was bad. Better read the book. It'll tell you something. You see. That any that do such things, it's an obstruction to the eternal one. You can't get to know the eternal one with these obstructions in front of you. These you have to knock down, tear down, throw away. If you're going to know the eternal one. Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. You're going to die and go back to the worms. But he that soweth in the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Hallelujah. Life everlasting. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth that gives you life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Yeah. You could say, and they are revelation of knowing the Most High. 1 Peter 2 and 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as a stranger and a pilgrim, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. And so the flesh can be an obstruction to your knowledge of the Most High. One more, verse number four. The devil offered Jesus Christ the nations of the world and their glory. No one can be obsessed with loving this world and, and yet knowing the Most High in a very intimate and precious way. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, beginning in verse 8, it says, The devil took Jesus up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, All these things will I give you if you'll just fall down here and worship me. He's still doing that. He's still offering people kingdoms if they'll just worship him. 
But Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And him only shalt thou serve. That's the way you break through the obstructions, by the word of God, by the spirit of God. In Mark 4, 19, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other, of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So there are obstructions. And seeking to know the most high. 